Hello, my name is Pandora, and I have been experimenting with shortcuts a lot, three, in terms of cutting with my black cat cougar, which I adore. And I found a lot of ways not to do it. So this is a quick video, hopefully going to save you some time and energy finding out the things that I found out recently. So this is shortcuts a lot, and we're using a 12 by 12 mat. Because my first cutter was a cricket, this is typically how I would have set up the mat. I created the shapes I wanted, I placed them in quadrants on the mat because I was using 6x6 paper, let's for instance, and as long as I put red here, green here, blue here, and purple there, I could send it to cut and it would pretty much cut out in exactly the way I expected. When I came to print and cut, I lined everything up and thought, that's great and um, I sent it to print and of course it didn't print well and it puzzled me for a while and eventually it percolated through my somewhat thick brain that this is a 12 by 12 mat and I have an A4 printer so it can't print that big. I wish I'd realized that before I wasted several sheets of paper. Eventually it percolated through so I hope this will save you making the same mistake. So what I need to do is change the mat size to the correct size. Now over here under the drop down arrow we have what are obviously cutter mat sizes 12 by 12, 12 by 24 and 8.5 by 11 which I think is the American letter size. So I'm going to go to custom because I'm actually using A4 paper which is slightly different and A4 paper is if you want to be incredibly exact 11.29 oops sorry it is 11.29 but it's 8.29 wide and it is 11.69 in height. And you can see now the issue. I've got things that are hanging off the mat and it's not going to work at all. Again, just to save time, I've created page two and on here I've put some elements and I've colored them since I'm doing print and cut. I've colored them all differently, just as an example. And I thought, well, that's great. And I sent that to print. And I still had a problem because it would not print the registration marks in the correct place. If you look here, the dotted line coming down here and here, that is technically the edge of your A4 sheet of paper. Now, if you go to print preview button up here, you can see that here, here and here are the three registration marks. The first thing I discovered was they don't print. Well, they do, but not unless you do it in the right order. So here's our mat and the way to do it to get those things to print. Because if I go to File, uh, Print, and I make sure that my print preview's on. If I zoom in here, you can see here, here, and here, there is no registration mark. Again, another wasted sheet of paper or two. Eventually, I found out that what you need to do is you need to go to Cutter. And actually, you can click on the scissors, but cut with my black cat because that's my machine. And here at the bottom, on this version of the software, there is a new button called Print and Cut. I had an older version. It wasn't there. Spent ages looking for it. Then I upgraded the software, and that solved the problem. And on here, it actually does tell you, you must print using the print and cut button below to print your artwork with the registration marks. So unless like, as in when you're using Inkscape, you have a registration file and you place them here, you need to do it from this dialog box or it simply doesn't work. So in order to check whether this was going to print when I eventually worked this out, I clicked on print here. Again, I just want to check the print preview is still on. Yes, it is. And click on OK. And can you see here, I have an issue. This one is not going to print correctly. It should look like this. So what I was doing, and I'm hoping to save you an enormous amount of time here, I was cancelling out of my print, cancelling out of this, moving the element, and going back through the whole sequence again, bringing up the dialog box, bringing up the print box, bringing up the print preview box, 
and I wasted a lot of time doing that. However, I then found another option, which is so much easier I could kick myself. Anyway, here it is, up under cutter. There is a little drop-down option here called preview options. And if you click on that, let's just bring it into the center here. Here, there is a wonderful little line saying show print margins. So we click on it and click on OK, and nothing much happens until we click on the print preview button. And here, if I zoom in on this part here, can you see this is my Canon printer and that is the edge of my print margins. Again here, these are the edge of my print margins. So these are just about OK, but this one is definitely not OK. So if I click on it and click on the element that is, and what you need to do is look down the line and see which is the element nearest to the edge. And it's this one here, and I'm just going to move it in a fraction. If I click on the preview button again, it's still pretty close going to move it ever so much slightly in. And again on the preview button, now I can see that this one is now well within my print margins. I could, just for be absolutely certain, move it down slightly. Now I can see it's definitely within my print margins. These two here are ever so just on the edge of the line. So just to avoid any kind of problem, looking down this line, it looks like this heart is the one that's nearest to it. So again, I'm going to move it over ever so slightly. I'm just going to move that one as well. And if I go back to the margins, now I can see here is my print margin. That's the actual paper size. That one is the print margin. And here are my registration marks. And I do hope that that little trick will save you an absolute amazing amount of time. I can't tell you how much time I wasted trying to work it out. So one other thing that I've learned, which might come in useful, is I've been, I'm become quite a fan of lettering delights. And these are all lettering delights from a set called Balloon Craze. And they're on my computer, so all I do is click on SVG, click on the file, go down and decide which one do I want. And let's put that one in and click on open and it places it in the file. Now, as you can probably see, I've got several already on here. I've even turned one upside down and I've turned the rainbow upside down or sideways just to show it doesn't really matter in terms of where they are. If I click on my print preview button, you can see that I've got, I don't have an issue anymore with these lines because I'm learning where to put them. But if I actually send this to cut, it will cut out all of these pieces. Now that's absolutely great if you want to cut out all the pieces. I don't. What I actually want to do is print and cut. So if I click away here, I want to print the image and then just click around the outside. And I found lots of ways not to do that. However, I found a very sneaky way that seems to work really well with most of these files. So how do we do it? First of all, you need the layers palette open. I've got mine open down here. I'm going to move it up here and just expand it a bit so you can see what I'm up to next. Now, and bring it near the image so you can see what happens. What you'll find is that for most of these, certainly for the lettering delights, you have a little folder with an icon next door to it. So here's the very top balloon, here is the icon, and here is the arrow. If I click on the arrow, you'll see that there are lots of layers. And that's important for a moment. So the first thing I want to do is I want to print it. So I can click on my scissors, I go to print and cut. And using this button here, I send it to print. And if I just click on OK, I've got my print preview on just so I double check that I've got everything working. And here it says start printing. Well, I've actually already printed it, so I'm going to cancel this. At this point, I now need to just close this off for a moment. What I want to do now is having printed it, I want to make sure I'm only cutting the base layer. So how do we do that? Well, again, if we come back to this layers palette, and by the way, if you can't see it, go up to window and the very first one or control plus one will actually open it up. Usually it opens up in this bottom corner to the right here. But when you can see this first one, if you click on it, you can see which layer it refers to click on this triangle pointing towards this side and you'll see all the layers. These eyes are on and off switches. 
If you wanted to cut this individually, you can switch these on and off as required, depending on the paper. What I'm going to do is switch off all of the ones till I get to the base layer. And here is the base layer. So that's the base layer I want to cut out. And I'm then going to click on this to close it. I'm going to click on the mountain. Now, there are only two parts of the mountain, so I'm going to switch off the snow and I'm going to close it again. I'm going to click on here and again. So on this one there are two layers and if I click off the blue I get the base layer. I'm going to close it up again, go to the rainbow and again simply going down from the top enables me to get to the base layer and the only reason I'm closing them up again is so that it, I can see them more easily. Again come down to the balloon, click on down, and eventually I'll get to the base layer. And with the last one, the same thing again, click on down, and I'm left with the base layer. Now that I've got to this stage, what we need to do is just check. So I'm going just to click on my preview, and you can see these are the outlines they're going to cut out, including the very small lines. In order to actually cut it out, you do need to go through the print and cut menu. What is interesting to note here is this window over here will actually show you how to position your paper in your printer. And it's important when you put the paper in to line the blade up in the bottom right hand corner of the square because that's where it starts to work everything out from. So you can see here's the outline of my printer, the black cat, and the blade is positioned in this bottom right corner. You do need to go through print and cut. So click on print and cut. <clears throat> Having put the paper in your mat, you click on next. And you start lining up. It, it does actually show here, position the laser so it is over the center of the printed registration mark at the top left of the design, and then click OK. One really important thing to do is you must use these arrows in order to position it. If you don't, it will not work properly. So when you're positioning the print and cut over the registration marks, do use these arrows to go up, down, and sideways. Holding the shift down will enable you to make larger movements. Holding the control down will enable you to make smaller movements. And also, I always leave this unchecked. I always want to set my own pressure and speed depending on what I'm doing. So I hope that's useful. I hope it helps. If you have any requests, please feel free to send them to me at myrequest at btinternet.com.